Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new updates coming from the sun. And in this case, it's best that we start the story with an actual video. The video of what the sun just did only a few days ago. This happened on March 13th of 2023, and what you're looking at is essentially the largest, the fastest, and probably the most powerful coronal mass ejection that the scientists have pretty much ever seen. The actual velocity of particles here is approximately 3000 km per second, with some scientists already comparing this to a potential Carrington event. So should we all be packing? Is this basically the end? No, not at all. We got super super lucky. This was filmed by one of the many probes NASA has observing the sun, and in this case it shows us the particles being expelled away from planet Earth, in the opposite direction. With the emissions reaching the location of planet Earth, or essentially the orbit of planet Earth, in approximately 20 hours. So basically that's how fast they were traveling. But the true power of this event, and more importantly what exactly caused it, is of course unknown to us. Nevertheless, because it was such a powerful event, even though it was emitted in the opposite direction, a small part of the emission did approach planet Earth as well. And because of this, in the last couple of days the entire Twitter was covered in videos and pictures of incredible aurora from pretty much around the world. So basically this event was so powerful that even though it headed in the opposite direction, it still affected planet Earth and still generated what's known as a G1 to possibly G2 type storm. Which is both a little bit nerve wracking, but also extremely important for several scientists that study these events and try to predict their occurrence. And the thing is, when it comes to these very unusual events that we know very little about, and that in theory could actually damage a lot of technology on our planet, something we discussed in previous videos you can find in the description, and something that we know for a fact happened back in 1989 in my home province of Quebec, trying to understand these events, and more importantly trying to predict these events, is one of the more important sciences of modern age. Because a lot of modern technology on our little planet is extremely vulnerable when it comes to these geomagnetic storms. Even in 1859 when the Carrington event occurred, and back then there was obviously not a lot of technology going around, it literally fried telegraph systems and caused fire in several locations. That's how powerful this was. And in some sense it's quite possible that it was this powerful, and this is one thing that we're not ready to find out. But there's probably no reason to panic yet, and actually probably for quite a while. What is important to understand here is that this is an important scientific field, and the scientists have been actually making a lot of progress in trying to figure out exactly what happens here, what causes all of this, and how to even predict these in the future. And this relates to several important videos in the description on this particular topic. But here I wanted to talk about the kind of a summary of everything we know so far, and what happened in this case as well. So when it comes to observing the sun, a few weeks ago, something else very unusual happened on the surface of the sun. This was observed in the northern region, very close to the north pole of the sun, and it appeared as a very strange filament of plasma that broke away from the sun and created a strange vortex-like formation circulating around the north pole. Nothing like this has ever been seen before, and even now this is still kind of difficult to explain, but this did suggest that the sun might do something really really strange very soon. Something very powerful and something related to geomagnetic field was happening on the surface of the sun. And a few years ago I made a video about the beginning of the new solar cycle. Basically every 11 years there is a kind of a solar cycle that the sun goes through, where every 11 years we start seeing the increase in a lot of solar activity and specifically a lot of sunspots, followed by a dramatic decrease and a quiet period that may last for a few months or even a year. The last cycle ended in 2020. And a lot of different scientists started to make predictions that the next cycle, cycle 25, is going to be relatively mild. Now another team of scientists disagreed, and I've actually talked about this video and the research in one of the videos you can find in the description. Their prediction basically stated almost the opposite. They suggested that this cycle is going to be one of the strongest on record, and they explained this pretty well, which you can learn more about in that video. And specifically their predictions called for 2025, July of 2025, as potentially being one of the most active periods in solar activity. Or basically that's when the cycle reaches its peak, with the sun then going through a polarity reversal and beginning a decrease in solar activity. More importantly, their paper predicts that the cycle is not actually 11 years, but it's 22 years. And so every 22 years there seems to be a dramatic increase in activity, and it just so happens that we're about to reach that peak. And so far, in the last couple of years, their predictions have been kind of correct. 
there's been a tremendous amount of activity, and very powerful activity, that a lot of scientists did not expect, except for the scientists behind this paper. With some scientists even predicting that there's maybe about 12% chance for a potential character event to occur sometime in this decade. We obviously don't know when, and we don't really know what science our sun is going to be exhibiting before it happens, but maybe this type of an event is preceded by something like this. So maybe there is a connection here after all, with a lot of anomalies observable on the surface of the sun, potentially indicating something really powerful is about to happen. Once again, all of this happened approximately one month apart. And that's on top of a lot of other mysteries about the sun the scientists have been discovering in the last few months. For example, the scientists have also discovered that during certain emissions, there is an unusual pattern produced by the radio signals, sometimes referred to as quasi-periodic pulsations, that seem to resemble an actual heartbeat, at least in terms of the shape of the radio frequencies. This does seem to happen during more powerful emissions, and so it's not entirely clear if this is something that happens all the time or only during the most active periods. The actual nature of this is also unknown. But there is something even more intriguing and somewhat more unsettling. Obviously, there's another video about this in the description. There's also something known as the Miyake events. And in the last couple of years, the scientists discovered that these events are even more dramatically powerful. And they also seem to happen on a much grander scale and seem to appear every few hundred years. And we actually seem to be a little bit overdue for the next one. Now, this topic we're going to be discussing in more detail in one of the future videos. So, obviously, subscribe if you want to learn more. But in a nutshell, these events are like 10 to maybe even 100 times more powerful than the Carrington event and simply even affect the atmosphere of the planet so much that it then becomes visible in various carbon deposits, such as, for example, inside various tree rings. But what exactly causes these events is entirely unknown. And so that by itself is even a bigger mystery. We'll talk more about this very soon. Well, anyway, in a nutshell, looks like our sun did emit something really major, but also gave us a break. It was pointed in the opposite direction. But had it hit planet Earth? Even today, it's not entirely clear what exact effects it would have on the planet and how exactly it will affect our technology. And even here, the things would be really complex. Certain areas on the planet are in a much higher risk compared to other areas. For example, here's what the map of North America would look like, with the darker patches being the most at risk. Most of this is a combination of the magnetic field of the planet and the overall conductivity of soil in those regions. So basically all of this is super complex, we still know very little about it, but it does have a very high chance to potentially disrupt modern technology. We'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, don't panic, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Don't panic, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.